In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear parking brake shoes on this Kia Forte Coupe. These are located behind your rear wheels. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Once you've completed that, the next thing you need to do is remove all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off, there's something we need to mention. It's always a good idea to completely disassemble the rear brake caliper so you can thoroughly inspect your brake pads and brake rotor, just in case you need them. To start disassembling the brakes, we're going to make our way to the caliper. We have to depress the caliper piston, which is located in this area. This can be done in a couple different ways. We'll do this by using a pry bar right inside this area, prying up against the brake pad, and we'll gently start pulling this outward. Once you have movement from there, we'll continue on with our two caliper slider mounting bolts. To remove these, we'll be using a 14 millimeter. Start with the top one there. Just go ahead and loosen it up. Leave it in there a couple threads. Once you have the caliper off there, the next thing that you need to pay attention to is the caliper piston and the protective boot. If you see any fluid making its way out of this area, it's brake fluid and you have to replace the caliper. This one looks fine. We'll set it aside. Now it's time to remove our brake pads. We'll just give those pads a quick inspection and set them aside. Continue with your 14 millimeter. We're going to remove the two caliper bracket mounting bolts. Same process. Remove the upper, quick inspection, start it back in just a couple threads. The next thing we'll have to do to be able to remove the brake rotor is look for this Phillips head screw. You can see it right here next to the lug stud. To remove this, typically you're going to have to have a bit driver. With that bit driver, we're going to apply counterclockwise pressure and tap on it with a hammer. Continuing from here, we'll be using that hammer and we need to tap on the brake rotor, separating it from the wheel bearing located behind it. Now that we have the brakes out of the way, we have a clear view of our rear parking brake shoes. Before we start removing these, let's clean and inspect the area real quick. We've got a little wire brush. We'll try to remove as much of this debris as possible. Once you've cleaned the area, the next thing we need to do is start removing the mounting hardware holding the shoes in place. If you were to pay attention along the top area, you're going to find that you have two springs, one holding each of the shoes in place. Now to remove these, we'll be using a brake spring removal tool. Just come right up along the top, carefully start removing this spring from its mounting point. Slide that off of there. Repeat the process for the other spring. As you can tell, there's minimal room to get in here. Now this flat plate should come off of here as well. We'll just tap it with a hammer. Now we'll make our way down to there to our anchor point. To remove this anchor point, you're going to find you have a pin that makes its way from the back side of the backing plate straight on through the backing plate, through the parking brake shoe, and comes out right along this area. 
There's also a spring and a clip holding onto that pin. To remove this, you could use some long nose pliers. We'll hold onto that clip. Go ahead and press that towards the parking brake shoe while holding the pin along the backside. Now you can see the pin protruding through. Once you are pressing on that, you need to go ahead and twist this and turn this just enough that it breaks free from that mounting pin. Now, obviously, we're going to have to inspect this, assuming you are reusing it. Pay attention to the port in the center. You want to make sure it's not rotted and damaged. We also want to pay attention to that spring. A little bit of rust is okay. Just make sure that it is still in good working order. Now we'll focus on the pin here. I'm going to reach along the back side of that backing plate. We'll press this right on through. A quick inspection of the pin. As you can tell, ours is pretty rusted. We'll have to clean this up, give it a thorough inspection. With that shoe dislodged, we should be able to take hold of it and we'll carefully start pulling it away. And we can remove this parking brake bridge. Now we'll be paying attention down along the bottom of that shoe. In this area, you're going to find that you have a spring that makes its way from one shoe all the way over to the other and just below it is where the adjuster is. We're going to have to remove the adjuster and the spring from down in this area. At this point, I'll be using a small prying device. You can use a flat blade screwdriver or even a pry bar. We're going to start separating the shoes. Like I said, we need to pull this adjuster right out of position. Slide that right out from along the back side there. Here's part of it. Now you will have to thoroughly clean this. To do that, you want to make sure that you completely open this, clean the threaded portion, re-lubricate it, and then also remove the rearward portion here. You want to make sure you clean and lubricate that. Take hold of that shoe. Slide the spring off of there. Now we can dislodge the other shoe. Let's make our way back to that anchor point. You know exactly what to do. We'll be using our long nose pliers. Hold that pin along the back side. Once again, we need to inspect inside of this area. Slide that shoe out of the way. We can remove our pin. Clean it up, close inspection. Now on this rearward shoe, you're going to find that you have your parking brake mechanism, which leads up to your parking brake cable. We'll have to remove the cable from that mechanism. To do that, you can use some pliers. We'll hold on to the end here, and at that point, you should be able to carefully start rolling this out of position. There it is, friend. With the parking brake shoes out of position, the next thing you need to do is clean and inspect the backing plate. Paying close attention to all six of the raised areas that will touch up against the back side of your parking brake shoes. You can see one right here, one down towards the center, and one all the way down along the bottom. Of course, you will have the exact same thing along the front. One, two, and three right up along the top there. With the backing plate cleaned, we're going to have to lubricate all six of those raised areas that I had mentioned. One, two right there, one right down here, same on the other side. Okay, now it's time to install our parking brake shoes. When installing these, you want to make sure you have the proper parking brake shoe. We're looking in the kit. We want to make sure we have it so we have the armature or the actuator for the parking brake on the rearward shoe. Now we're going to have to put this onto the parking brake cable. To be able to do that, you want to use two pairs of pliers. The first pair of pliers is going to go right along the bottom area here. And the second portion is going to make its way right up along here. And what we're going to have to do is gently pry against each other, holding on the center there, and then we can slide the parking brake actuator into the proper position. Now it's time for the parking brake shoe. Just want to slide that right into the groove there. Release pressure. As we start bringing this into position, we're going to have to continue on to our one anchor point for the rearward shoe here. Go ahead and take that pin, bring it through that backing plate, and then through the parking brake shoe. Now for the rear mounting pin, what you're going to find is you have to make your way in between the bracket and the backing plate here. So I'm just going to come in right like that. Just bring this right along the back of the backing plate. 
our way right in between, like I said. And get that through the shoe. You can see it come on through. Now it's time for our spring and our locking clip. We need to align the slot on that locking clip with the little tines that are on the pin. Press in on that and twist it. Sometimes you can do it by hand, other times you have to use those pliers. Now once you feel as though you have it in place, pay close attention in the center. You want to make sure the slot's going one way and the pin itself is going the opposite. If it looks like the head of the pin is off like this, it's not completely locked in and this might come apart while you're driving down the road. Pay close attention. Now we'll pay attention to that adjuster. As I mentioned, you need to completely separate it, clean the threads, inspect them, and re-lubricate them. Once you have it lubricated, we'll start putting this back together until it's completely bottomed out. With that side complete, we'll pay attention along the far side there. We're also going to lubricate this. Just a tiny bit will do. Work it in. Now when we go to install this, you want to make sure you have the threaded portion facing towards the front of the vehicle and the smooth portion facing towards the rear. Now it's time for the lower spring. Once you have that installed, we're making our way back to that adjuster. Once again, we have it in the proper positioning. We want to make sure that we slide that onto that parking brake shoe. It should sit right on there. Now while that's sitting on there, we're going to continue on with our other parking brake shoe, the forward shoe. For this, what we want to do is go ahead and stretch it right on over that spring. And now we're going to bring it over the adjuster, right inside the groove, and slide it into position. There we are. Now it's time to reinstall the bridge. You want to make sure you have the spring portion facing towards the front of the vehicle. And if you are looking at the slotted portion, you're going to find that the forward side is a much thinner slot than the rearward side. Let's carefully start pulling this down and out of the way. We'll get the bridge into the proper positioning here. back shoe. Slide the shoe right inside the grooves on each side of this bridge. Nice. Now it's time for the anchor pin, spring, and mounting clip. Let's get that anchor pin in along the back side of the backing plate, bring it right on through that parking brake shoe. There it is. Get this in position. Use our pliers. Press it, twist it, inspect it. Continuing from here, we have our small plate. We'll be making sure to reinstall that into the proper area. That should go right up against here. When installing these springs, you wanna come in at an angle, swinging it into the hole in the shoe. Once you've done that, we'll continue on with bringing the spring over this area. You wanna make sure that plate does sit in the proper position up against this as close as possible while doing so. Of course, the springs will hold it there once they're in position as well. Careful for any pinch points. There we go. Once again, I'm just gonna adjust that plate as necessary here. Let's get the next spring on there. Same process. Now, once you've done so, you wanna make sure that the ears of the spring are over this tab as needed. You don't want them hanging off of there. Once you have all the hardware in position, you need to confirm that everything's seated properly. Before we can install our brake rotor, we need to make sure we clean our wheel bearing hub. That's this area right here, and it's the mating surface for our rotor to sit on. To do this, you can use a wire brush or even some sandpaper if necessary. Once you've cleaned and inspected the area, go ahead and apply some anti-seize. I don't need very much here. Now it's time to install our brake rotor. It's 
Let's install our mounting screw here. Now the next thing we need to do is make the adjustment for our emergency brake shoes. There's an adjuster that's located right down along the bottom here. Now to make this adjustment, use a flat blade screwdriver. What I like to do is just go ahead and carefully start putting it in here. Once it stops, go ahead and start turning this rotor one direction or the other. When it feels as though it stops there, that's where the adjuster star should be. Now at this point, you just want to go ahead and turn that adjustment one way or the other and make sure that you have minimal resistance on the brakes here. If you try to spin this and it doesn't want to spin at all, it's over adjusted. If you go ahead and spin it and it just spins forever like that, that means it's under adjusted. We want to only feel a little bit of resistance. Once you've completed that, the next thing you need to do is install a rubber plug in this area, assuming you have one. Now, since we're taking apart the brakes to thoroughly inspect them, it only makes sense to also disassemble the bracket and re-lubricate that as well. We'll start along each side. You should have caliper bracket tins. We'll just pop those right out of place. There we are. Now, continuing from there, we're going to remove each of our two caliper slider pins. To remove those, typically you want to take hold of the boot itself and the pin and carefully slide the pin out and away from the caliper bracket and the boot. Once you have that off there, you want to clean and inspect that as well. To do that, we can just use a clean rag, give it a quick wipe. The areas on the slider pin you need to pay attention to would be this smooth shafted area here. Of course, we want to make sure there's nothing on there that can restrict this from moving as it should. And then also up closest to my thumb here, there's a small groove and that's where the boot will sit. If it looks like there's any miscellaneous debris in there, go ahead and use a wire wheel or a wire brush and clean it up. That one looks pretty good. Do the same to the other one. Something to note when cleaning and lubricating these, there are two different caliper slider pins. What you can see on the one I have in my hand is down closest to my thumb here, we have a vibration dampener. We want to ensure that this is still in good working order as well, not swollen or damaged in any way. So we'll pay attention to that, the shafted area, and all the way up at that point right there, closest to my fingers. As I mentioned, we want to remember exactly where each one of these goes so we can reinstall them in the proper positioning. We'll set those aside. Continuing from there, we'll be removing the caliper slider boots from the bracket. For this, you should be able to take hold of the boot, squeeze it, and slide it right out of place. Once you have it dislodged, the next thing you need to do is clean and inspect it. We want to make sure it's soft and pliable, not torn, worn, or damaged. To clean these boots, you can use a rag, twist it, and bring it straight on through the center. Try to pull it through the far end there. Now, once you have it through there, the next thing we'll do is continue on with rubbing the boot like this in a circular manner. That's going to remove as much of the debris and grease from the inside of the boot as possible. One last inspection here. We'll set that one aside. Same process for the other caliper slider mounting boot. Continuing from here, we'll have to use some parts cleaner inside of each of the ports where those caliper slider pins will go. Something to keep in mind is you want to have a collection receptacle so you can recycle the fluid properly. Other than that, typically when you're using a parts cleaner spraying in, some of it will want to spray out. So make sure you're careful that it does not spray on your face. Give these a quick rinse. With each of those two ports cleaned out, the next thing we need to do is clean the mounting points where those caliper bracket tins were sitting. To do this, you can use a wire brush or even some sandpaper if necessary. At this point, we have all of the caliper bracket cleaned up. We can continue on with the reinstallation process. 
For the installation process, we'll use some high temperature caliper lubricant inside of each one of the two caliper slider ports. Continuing from there, we need to reinstall our two caliper slider boots. Those just pretty much press right in there, give them a little twist, make sure they are properly secured. Continuing from there, it's time for our caliper slider pins. You want to lubricate the entire smooth shafted area all the way down to the tip and up inside the groove closest to my fingers. We'll slide that in. Squeeze out any air from inside the boot here. Continue on the same process for the other caliper slider pin. Once again, we're paying attention to the vibration dampener that's on one of the slider pins. It needs to go back in the very same port as where you had removed it. spin. We've got our tins. We'll use some more of that high temperature caliper lubricant along those areas that we had cleaned up where the tins will sit. Now it's time to install those caliper bracket tins. We'll just slide them right on there. Typically for these, when you install them, you should feel them click into the proper position. Once you've done so, just give them a little wiggle and make sure they're properly secured. Let's get this over to the vehicle. Let's get the caliper bracket on the vehicle. Now for those two caliper bracket mounting bolts, you're going to find that one's a little bit longer than the other. The longer bolt will go up along the top. We'll start that in by hand. Down along the bottom, we're using the shorter mounting bolt. Once again, starting it in by hand. Once they're both started, you can bottom them out. We'll torque these to 50 foot pounds. Now it's time to install our brake pads. When installing brake pads, you want to make sure you have your inboard pad with the wear indicator, and that wear indicator needs to be facing up. We'll slide that brake pad into position here, pressing it up against the brake rotor. Once you do have it in position, go ahead and give it a little wiggle. We want to make sure that you can move it around easily and it's not stuck in place. If you have to use a hammer to drive it in there, you didn't clean the bracket well enough. Outer pad, no wear indicator. Let's get that on there. Same process, slide it in, make sure it can move around. Now let's pay attention to the caliper. Once again, we're using our high temperature caliper lubricant. This time we're going along the piston area and along the backside of each of these two ears. Essentially on the areas that are hitting up against your brake pads. This will help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. With that lubricated, we'll slide it right on over the brake pads and caliper bracket. Continue on with your two caliper slider mounting bolts. Snug each of these and torque them to 20 foot pounds. One last quick inspection in this area and it's time to reinstall our wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out and get the wheel safely back down on the ground. With the wheel back on the ground, we'll be torquing each one of our lug nuts in a crisscross manner to 80 foot pounds. Torqued. Okay friend, we showed you how to install one side of your vehicle's parking brake shoes. The process for one side is the exact same thing as the other. Once you've completed that, you need to make sure you pump up your brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Test the emergency brake and then take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. 
Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.